In a world of boring talk, misinformation, and mindless chat, two superheroes emerge from the asses. Ashes. Ben, is this asses or ashes? Bring the action. Happy hour with Ben and Alexander. Pull up a chair. Raise a glass. Enjoy it in the chat. <laughs> it's talk radio with Jason. Oh my God, you had to say that. Yes. <laughs> the king of the highest ratings. Who we got in here today with Michael us? Michael Levitt. And what is this? We're done. So he's like America, one of America's top executive producers. Yeah, yes, and sir. And everything he does is the highest ratings. Yes, sir. So uh, the memorial. Uh, uh, memorial. <laughs> I'm sorry, not so really funny thing to joke about. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, familiar? close. But who's that? Michael Jackson. Yes. Yeah, so, so Never had not, surgery. Not a funny thing, but uh, yeah. He, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't know how to segue that. Um, the memorial service. But okay. Do you like how I dropped it down uh, yeah, to be very nice. respectful? But no, that, how, and how incredible was it to... to Produce uh, yeah, that I, event. That's a that's a beast. Uh, that is a beast. Um, also, uh, Kathy Griffin, my life in the D list. Brittany. The, the, uh, produce Brittany's two first yeah, specials. Yeah. What? And what is like Brittany in Hawaii, which yeah. is like Gidget in Hawaii. Now it's like Brittany. Just... No, no. Hey, she's in Vegas, rocking it out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Careful. So we're gonna talk about that. And then, who's responsible for the TV Land Awards, which is responsible like, like, like cre- create like the whole thing. the whole shebang, and is responsible for some of the best reunions. In mm-hmm. fact, I think he's the most produced uh, reunion producer. I uh-huh. uh, did the Dallas reunion. Yep. 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 Uh, um, the Happy Days reunion, <laughs> yes, um, and also uh, on on all the TV Land Award shows, mm-hmm. putting it together. Amongst, I mean, amongst how many other things from the red carpet, the E News Live, and I mean, Oprah's All Stars. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, it's gonna be an it's gonna the be Billboard a great Music show. Awards. The Billboard and the, uh, and E 2011, he did uh, the Golden Globes, the Emmys, and the Academy Awards live for from e the red carpet. Holy sh! Mother I guess, of I, God. I guess he didn't have our phone number. I, <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> can, can you imagine us on red carpet? No, I cannot. Hi, hi, I don't hi, think. Hi, <laughs> Uh, the, the pass, I, pass. I, I, anyway, so it's Should we just get into it? Right, cue it up, Natasha. Roswell, New Mexico, 19. You've been hit by, you've been struck by a smooth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live from Sunset Gower Studios here in the heart of Hollywood. The boys of Happy Hour are proud to present the man who's worked with them all. From Brady to MJ, one of America's top television producers, Michael Levin! <laughs> What's going on? Wow. Uh, woo! What's going wow. on? Wow. <laughs> How wow. are you? Well, I'm great now. <laughs> good, good. We did our job then. How crazy, because you yeah. told Brittany, literally, you, you better work, bitch. <laughs> I kind of did. I In Hawaii, did. you did her earliest specials from from uh, the, the, the Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, you worked uh, 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 the Michael Jackson Memorial Service, Oprah's All Stars, uh, the Teen Choice Awards, the Scream Awards, the TV Land Awards, the Red Carpet. Let's rattle your resume off right Wow, again. <laughs> and all this started from uh, a job at South Coast Plaza. Kind of did. Um, I just want to say I, I can't get past your, your Slim Fast bottle rolling oh out God. of your car out of the On top of McDonald's. the supersized McDonald's yeah, bag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. My God. But it's Alexander. I mean, yeah. it's, it's exactly story of my life. what that would happen. Uh-huh. Yeah, you had, you had me at Slim Fast, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he texted me real fast after that. Right, right. <laughs> He's like, my car's over here. G- gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> Deuces. See you at the drive through <laughs> Michael Levitt. Yes. Welcome. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, and I really appreciate that nice uh, intro. That you was like very it. cool. He was anxious yeah. to get it to you. Yeah. Right? Well, because you were born in Roswell, which everybody knows I'm obsessed with UFOs. Then you go to my homeland, which is OC, Orange County. San right. And then you live in L.A. It's almost like we're twins. Uh-oh. Maybe a little bit. The crazy thing, though, is that people are kind of more freaked out <laughs> that I was raised in Orange County <laughs> than born born in Roswell. Roswell. <laughs> They're like, where were you born? Roswell. Oh, oh. my gosh. <laughs> where were you raised? Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> ah! So, yeah. It's kind of an interesting combo. Very interesting. But yeah. I want to know sure. uh, the journey because um, you started executive producing – and, and co-creating these amazing projects right from the start. Just briefly tell me, how, how, how does that happen to Sure. Somebody? Well, it wasn't right from the start. I mean, I, I got to say, I grew up as a latchkey kid watching TV. When I'd get home, my parents would be at work, and I would actually get in trouble from watching. T- my parents would say, you're watching way too much TV. <laughs> so you can appreciate the joy I had in sort of throwing it back in their face. <laughs> like, saying, that was research. Do you want a new pool? <laughs> that because was research. Exactly. 
So I always had an interest in television and I was always enamored by the glitz and glamour of Hollywood and red carpets and award shows. And I always sort of knew that I wanted to go in that direction. And uh, one of the first jobs I had was I was able to finesse becoming a page, which is like a gopher yeah, right, you know, right, right. Uh, for all these Norman Lear sitcoms. So I would work on shows like The Facts of Life, oh my God. One Day at a Girls, Time, Girls. Silver Spoons. And I was 16 years old living in Orange County. So I would I would uh, take zero period in high school. I would get out of school at noon. I would My mom would let me drive her station yeah. wagon. <laughs> and I would drive to LA and I'd work twice a week. I, and my friends would be working like at McDonald's. I did oh that gosh. to make you happy, Alexander. <laughs> the McDonald's <laughs> reference. But I was coming up here and I'd work on, you know, Facts of Life, Different Strokes, all these cool shows. And that's how it all kind of started for me. And then... As a result of working on that show, there was a, a writer on one of the sitcoms that was oh, wow. also doing the Emmy Awards. And she gave me a job as like, a, well, kind of like a, Chris, Chris Guida, Guida huh? as like a talent escort. And I was, I think, 17 then. And I was assigned to Joan Collins. And it was, oh like, my yeah, God. And it was the height of Dynasty. What? And the producers were like, good were, luck to you, kid. Were you allowed to look at her in the eyes? <laughs> yeah, well. She's like Medusa. Yeah, no, I was freaked out. But what was great was she, You're 17, right? Yeah, I'm okay. 17. <laughs> oh, she probably liked you, girl. She loved me. <laughs> <Yes>. We clicked. <laughs> Those but, baby blues, right? Yes, I <laughs> yes. guess so. But what was so funny was I didn't know award show etiquette. So in the middle of the live <laughs> telecast, I ran out in the audience to check on her, not on a commercial break, oh, like shit. in the middle of the show, I knelt down and I'm like, I'm just checking on you. Do you need anything? And she said, yes, I'd actually like a hot ham and cheese sandwich. No, she did not. She did. And I said, okay. So I ran back I out in the lobby. Jewish. I don't know. She's, <laughs> I don't know. Don't throw her under the bus. No, Come she's on. a Listen. Joe Collins isn't Jewish. On, <laughs> right. Is she? She's probably her own religion, well, actually. Anyway. <laughs> JC. Oh, oh. oh, watch it now. Watch oh. it. All right. Careful. Be careful. Listen. No, so I, I'm like, hot ham and cheese. What do I do? So I snuck into the uh, press room. I didn't have the credential. <laughs> and they had ham in there. And I threw together this hot sandwich. I lucked out. Wrapped it in tin foil. Back during the show. Huh. Went back into the house. Excuse me, Mr. Forsyth. Excuse me, Miss Evans. Oh, my God. Here you go, Miss Collins. And the producers thought I was so resourceful that that just sort of led I, me that's, that's up crazy. the ranks. I love that. That's like that a, was the start. A that's hot like a ham Hollywood sandwich. Cinderella story. It that's how it is. goes. But isn't that what an executive producer does is you do whatever it you takes make to it package happen. it together you do. and make it happen. And even to this day, I am. it's not above me to lift a table or Hell put, yeah. you know, I'll do whatever I take to get the get the show done. What was really crazy was this year, um, Hollywood Reporter did an Emmy edition, and they found a picture of me in the with Joan Collins <laughs> oh on the red gosh. carpet, and it was published this year. I'll have to send it yeah, to yeah, you. Yes, yeah, but yeah. it's amazing. That is that all that, these that, years later. And, and, well, and to see look look back at your career, although I mean that is what when you tackle some of these big projects, yeah. What is that? Do you, are you creating it? What is that? That do, whole do, process. Yeah. Do you take like a breath first and be like, "Wow, bitch." <laughs> well, kind of. Um, I'm so scared. Load up no. on the Xanax. Oh, now you're scared again. Was that you? Being yes, scared? that was him. I'm scared. Wow. I'm okay. a man of many voices. Yes, Usually, you it's are. down here. Manly. Yes, you are. Oh, of course, it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're a little blood. Don't. I hope this isn't. I hope this is a compliment. If you say Nathan Lane, I'm walking away. Okay, I'm not gonna say. I wasn't. If you say Ross Lane. Matthews, I'm walking away. Nope. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Wow, Ben, oh, help me out. You were going to say Juliana Rancic. Oh, he was going to say Juliana Rancic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's where I was <laughs> I'm going. I'm so spelled. Wow. Cinch it in, right? See? Okay. Sometimes you just got to let him she go. She needs to eat a goddamn cookie. Did you produce her cookie? <laughs> no, I didn't. But she's <laughs> lovely. Yes. She is. She's awesome. She just needs to eat. Yeah. Sometimes. So to answer your question, um, <laughs> my greatest joy as a producer is I, I consider myself a showman. So I live and love to create memorable moments that people talk about the next day. So... And we call them water cooler moments. And for me, if I can create a moment that goes viral or that people are chatting about the next day, I know that I've done my job. Well, and like with the award shows, with, with the, the musical award shows, with the billboards and stuff like right. that, do you work hand in hand with the, the artists themselves and kind of what they can do, what they can't do? And is that is that beyond stressful, trying to get the artist to tell you what's going on and if it's really what's going to happen on stage? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting process because we're in an era where these celebrities have so much on their plate. So usually their focus on an award show comes at the last minute. <laughs> so it's up to that myself explains, and my team to scramble. Mm -hmm. That explains Taylor Swift's performance at the last <laughs> music awards. Mm. 
So, <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So, um, no, I mean, she's great. And I, but, um, yeah. So, and, and in the old days, people would, you know, we would have much more input on the creative. Now the music artist pretty much comes self-contained and yeah. they have a good idea of what they want to do when they perform on a show. Right on. Um, you did the Michael Jackson Memorial Service, which was, uh, uh, at the Staples Center, how did you? Well, people obviously knew you from from the industry. What was your first step? Reaction and to you that. had to organize all of this talent and decide who was singing what, and then deal with the family, and then deal with the funeral itself. Right. What was that timeline like? Right. So that was in, an incredible and surreal experience. So the way that came about is my mentor, a man named Ken Ehrlich who's legendary producer of the Grammy Awards among many shows and someone that I look up to greatly and learn so much from. He was actually the one to get the first call. Uh, he had a long history with Michael and the okay. Jackson family. So when Michael passed away uh, about four days or maybe a week later, my phone rang and it was Ken on my caller ID. And I knew right then it had to do with Michael Jackson. And he said that he was approached about Putting, pulling this together and it was a lot to pull off in four days with four days to do it and could I get on board to help him produce it along with Kenny Ortega who everybody oh, knows is synonymous so I was really a producer I was one of three and really there to service Kenny and Ken but two hours after I got that call I was literally down at Staples Center in a boardroom with the Jackson oh, family wow. writing down a rundown on a piece of paper throwing it together in four short days and can you imagine being in that room well, just that moment that go time moment when you're taking on something that and to talk about viral because um, I think it that memorial service incorporated uh, it was very theatrical as it should have been but it was also very touching and then these moments like Mariah Carey's performance well, four days just, yeah. I think we four have a days. call um, or, we have a question. question. Have a question. <laughs> sure. um, during the course of your productions, how were you able to balance such intense, eccentric personalities without losing your cool? Good question. Wow, that's a. <laughs> I keep saying wow a lot. That's a fantastic question. Um, in all honesty, um, it's a challenge, and it becomes an even greater challenge as the years <laughs> go by. Um, I think I just have to not take it too seriously and just laugh and know that. Uh, any kind of I'm not surprised by any kind of curveball <laughs> I get from celebrities or networks. And part of being a good producer is being able to roll with the punches. It makes a lot of sense. Who do you still get starstruck by or has, or if anyone? Yeah. <laughs> um, not. Okay. Well, I guess when you work with him that much like and it's, everybody. It, it, that's your job. So I'm, I'm sure it's he's. I mean, I'm starstruck talking to him. Yeah. So oh, I mean, thank you. <laughs> I think I think I'm. I think I'm impressed by people that are doing great things on a human level. So like Sam Simon, the co-creator of The Simpsons, who right, right. Um, sadly is challenging uh, or battling colon cancer, but is dedicated his life to helping animals. Those are the kind of people that blow me away. And well, speaking of helping animals, you have a, a few things that are close to your heart, right? You sure. want to talk about them a little bit? Yeah. So I'm really excited because um, – as uh, I became an animal, a dog rescuer two years, three years ago. That's awesome. Uh, my sister was dying of cancer, and uh, my partner and I adopted a dog while she was fighting the good fight. And that saying, who rescued who? And this dog came into our life. His name was Trooper and completely rocked my world and inspired me. And as a result, I became a dog rescuer. But as a rescuer, I'm saving one dog at a time. And I knew there had to be a way to put my two worlds together of producing and dog rescuing. Absolutely. So I came up with this idea um, and the premises, we've seen the entertainment industry come together for Hope for Haiti, Stand Up for mm -hmm. Cancer, yep. all these causes. Well, now it's time for them to rally for man's best friend. And it's called the Great American Dogathon, where people can call up foster, adopt, and donate money to help I save rescue animals. I tried to sell it. I couldn't get past the finish line. I brought my idea to Hillary Swank, who's an animal advocate. She loved it. We partnered. We became, we developed it together. And I'm happy to say it's happening, and it's going to air Thanksgiving night on Fox. My oh, that's God. God. Yeah. What a better way to celebrate a family. Thanksgiving night. Yeah, and it's going to be a game changer for dogs and animal rescue because I think with that platform, we're going to save thousands of lives. And Hillary Smike is going to be singing Don't Cry From Me, Argentina, from Evita. 
No. <laughs> well, allegedly, and not no, really. No, Sarah McLaughlin, as much as I love her. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. We don't need that. I got it. Yes. Good call. We have another question over here. No, no, no. J- no? Just no. real fast, I have to say, you know, you produced all these amazing events. One of the best things um, that people remember um, is your uh, bar mitzvah that was the love boat themed. <laughs> Now, where did you get that? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, we do our research. <laughs> so this is how people knew that I was destined for television and becoming a producer. <laughs> Many things I think you were destined well, for. <laughs> so while most Jewish boys had themes of football, hockey, and baseball, my parents were a little caught off guard when I told them I wanted my theme <laughs> to be the love boat. The love boat. <laughs> yes. So I produced my own bar mitzvah, and yes. I actually <laughs> wore a skipper's hat. Yes. And I had the theme song playing. So it well, was you're reading th- from the brilliant. Talk? No, this was okay. at the reception. So it was like love, exciting and new. And I'd go, Mrs. Cohen, thank you for coming. You're at the Alcapoco table. Oh, oh my God. That's brilliant. Sail away. We're expecting you mr and mrs rosenstein you're lovely you're at the port of iarta table <laughs> can you imagine everybody's face they're like what that was brilliant it that, was that, great that, but that it, morty i think i think yes, morty yes that is a brilliant i can't thank you enough for coming in with Woo! us today the thank hour you. has come you are coming gone. back right i, would, I have back. many more stories you have yes, 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 we yes, didn't yes, even yes, touch yes, the, yes, tap yes, any yes. we have to today has been such a fun show thank you everyone for listening thank you so much thank for coming you so on Michael. Much. you're all awesome thank you um and naomi thank for you, calling natasha. in and natasha of course what's coming on next week I will put you in. <laughs> Happy